My name is Nate Geyer, uh, the founder of Mintbase. It's a non-fungible token creation minting uh, platform, but it does a whole bunch more. But the whole point of this talk is to really dive into the technology and what it is that we built on to, to make all this stuff work. So uh, without further ado, I will take over the screen and show you all sorts of stuff. All right, so uh, Mintbase Inc., uh, we are the ground zero for the new virtual economy. Um, you can basically come on our platform, mint a token, declare what that token does, and uh, use that throughout the, the new world. So um, our team, we're quite small. Uh, again, I'm Nate Geyer. You can follow me on Twitter, uh, at Nate Geyer. Um, so... The focus of this is what brought all of this together. Uh, basically, let me get rid of this piece. Uh, basically, the quality of our tech and community is uh, Mintbase's lead competitive advantage. I feel like uh, in order to really be a key differentiator and keep up with the times in blockchain, you have to really understand the tech, uh, much like uh, the early days of the internet, a lot of the big companies that were created were created by developers uh, and engineers. Google, Facebook um, are a few to name, name a few. Uh, MySpace was basically created by a lot of marketers and we saw how that didn't really keep up with the times. And I feel like right now in the blockchain space, um, we're kind of in a space where we need to understand the tech. Um, I think in regular internet land, uh, it's fairly easy to understand how and the limitations of what the internet can do. Um, so you don't really need to be a core engineer nowadays to, to be a CEO or creator of, a, of one of these companies. But we're going to dive into what, what makes us special and how we've been keeping up with the times. Uh, we're constantly iterating. We're deploying every single day. Um, the logos you're seeing right now are kind of the core group of, of what we're building on. Um, and to just kind of go into what, what we are, uh, Mintbase is basically the Amazon of digital assets on a blockchain, providing the best tools for the new virtual economy. So you basically come on board, uh, you create your tickets, your VR assets, gaming, uh, photography, all sorts of things. Uh, ticketing has been a big, big item for us. Um, so how does all this work? So basically the big difference is the creator is the owner of a token. Um, they come on board, they deploy their own smart contract and uh, a customer can buy that asset directly from them. And after 12 seconds, uh, the asset moves from the creator to the customer, the funds get moved over to the creator. And now we have this beautiful interoperable asset that um, crypto voxels and OpenSea and exchanges can all uh, interact with. Um, I'm going to just kind of jump into uh, a little show of what it is. So I'm going to hook into Rinkaby. Rinkaby is a uh, test network. Uh, imagine it's just a big world where anyone can come on and basically interact with your application with fake ether. Um, so what I'm going to do is pop in here. And so here's my sort of dashboard. We can see all the NFTs that were created. If we want to go ahead and come in here and edit, uh, we can see all these different bits of NFTs. If we want to create our own whole new smart contract, we can come in here and deploy it. That would then populate into this uh, item. And as soon as we come in here, we can basically uh, mint new tokens or old tokens uh, also mint fresh tokens from scratch. So we can declare whether it's art, um, we can add multiple files uh, and we can declare when these items are, are actually available. And so with that in mind, uh, as soon as we upload the image and the content, everything goes to this thing called Arweave. Um, so I'm gonna actually dive into all of what makes this interesting. So, Let's go into open. Okay, here we are. 
So we have over 725 uh, deployed smart contracts with 70,000 transactions and over 18,000 users. So how were we able to do all this with just me as the developer and designer? Um, let's see. Uh, we were able to do it with this tech stack. Um, so on the left side, we can see all of that is uh, the traditional. So we're using Next.js as uh, our server side rendering uh, engine, React, Stripe. We also accept uh, credit and debit cards um, via the same on-ramp as how uh, Lyft drivers go through. Uh, we are using uh, Google Firebase and uh, Fire uh, and Google Functions. Um, mainly, a lot of that is just for experimentation and uh, doing things really quickly. So a lot of how we're redeeming tickets at conferences uh, is basically run by those systems. Or let's say uh, our email engine with SendGrid is, is fired off uh, when those things get interacted um, through that pub sub model. Um, more on the decentralized side on the right, we've got Rweave, which is how we're storing all of our files, Open Zeppelin, which is what uh, is the, the lower stack of, 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 the, of our tokens um, and a whole bunch of others. I won't go too deep into all the rest. Uh, the main two ones that we're really gonna dive into are the graph and uh, our weave. So basically the graph is how we keep in sync with uh, the blockchain and our weave is where we're storing the actual data of that NFT and we'll go into why that matters. But I'm gonna kind of pull out of the depths of that and kind of explain what an NFT is and why those are quite interesting in uh, today's world. So let's go into, uh, so interoperability is a, a big, big thing. So we essentially have this new system where the token itself is the API. Uh, anyone can use that token and the smart contract to interact with that. Um, so we don't have to open up our own APIs uh, that restrict people to do certain things. And why that's neat is we can go into beautiful worlds like, let's say, crypto voxels. Uh, this is our uh, headquarters where a lot of our, we've put up some pieces of work uh, from people that have minted on our platform uh in our space and what's quite neat about this space is that i have to be the token owner to actually build on this system we can actually see a nice beautiful little unitized setup um, also if you haven't noticed uh, you actually built uh, a lot of you have uh, actually owned this unitized token that was minted on minface which enabled you to actually vote so what we're really pushing for is the process of being able to not only have a token uh, as a collectible, but to be able to have those tokens do a lot more than sit in your wallet. We want it to uh, enable you to vote, to be able to get you into co-working spaces, to get you into physical conferences, um, to send a pizza to your door. We want it to do a, a lot more. Um, and this interoperable aspect is, here's crypto voxels. If they wanted to, they could import uh, the store. So let's say we go into our NFTs, uh, it would load my NFTs and I can actually pop my NFTs in here directly without Mintbase ever having to actually open and expose those, those endpoints. Um, hopefully that makes sense, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big uh, mental leap for a lot of people. All right, so leaving the, the virtual world and coming back into this land, um, if you're not familiar with MetaMask, uh, this is just one of the wallets that I use. Uh, if I actually come in here and we wanted to do a freshman, actually, let's just see the whole process work from, from the beginning. So let's say we are full node, which is the co-working space that I work at, uh, I work in. Uh, if I wanted to come in here and do a fresh mint, we can upload an image. Let's go 600 by 600. Maybe we want to give away a day at Dacha, which is a very good Russian restaurant. We're actually going to load these files up to our weave, the block weave, which is another block uh, blockchain that interacts. Um, that we basically put this image uh, URL into uh, the smart contract. We'll just say this is a free lunch. Uh, we're going to just say, describe what this does. I, we'll mint seven of these things. We'll, say it's a product, we'll list the price. 
Um, we can also add a whole bunch of other pieces, but let's go ahead and mint. So now we're interacting with Ethereum. So as soon as we interact with Ethereum, this is the wallet that we're using. Uh, my platform doesn't keep any of your wallet information. We just signal to your wallet and say, hey, I'd like to mint this token. So then what we're basically doing is now, uh, without me touching anything, we're basically constantly pinging the graph to say, hey, once Ethereum has uh, minted that token, I want you to update my interface and actually show that token. So we basically interacted with two blockchains. We have Ethereum, which there's our token that we just minted. Uh, it works. We can mint more of these things if we want. Um, but that's a whole lot of technology working together. And I'll actually dive a little bit deeper into why that's interesting. Um, so if we come into, let's go over here. All right, so hopefully you guys are kind of grasping the idea of interoperability. It's, uh, yeah, you can interact with, with Twitter APIs, but this is a whole new world where if Mintbase goes away, then the token will still exist as long as Arweave and Ethereum exist. Um, and so what you get is you come onto our platform and you deploy your own store. And when you deploy your own store and we say smart contract, this is basically what you get. You get all these beautiful functions uh, on the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, the really hard part about building a blockchain company right now is we're seeing kind of a, a new, new world is being able to basically allow your application to work with all these different wallets. So we want the asset to not just live on Mintbase. Anybody can create a website and then have an image show up, right? That, that, that's not that big of a innovation. The big innovation is, okay, now that asset can be bought, delivered, sold, transferred, burned, and do all these different really interesting interactions on whatever wallet you want, because all these wallets have different security models. They have different features and you get to choose which wallet you want. This is kind of the big, a big uh wow that's blockchain uh starting to work and so we're we're very much uh very very pro being able to allow you to figure out what what wallets you want i actually created this thing with with sound on it but uh when you log in you can have uh fortmatic which is web 2.0 coinbase wallet wallet connect wallet connect allows you to uh connect with um argent and uh, trust, uh, Coinbase wallet, obviously the, the Coinbase wallet and so on. Um, so back into the tech stack. Uh, so if you've noticed, uh, there's a thing called three box, which is a really fascinating, uh, application because when everyone talks about uh, identity, um, if we actually go into Mintbase and I go onto mainnet, so my application doesn't start screaming at me because that's a good thing. So once that loads up, uh, you'll notice more Unitize uh, and San Francisco blockchain week tickets you can also grab that are available uh, now. If I come into our markets, uh, we use this company called 3Box. So you'll notice, you'll see our logo, our logo uh, and a few, that means the user or the creator or the, the, um, the person who minted hasn't created a three box account. So we can actually even come into our Unitize uh, store, which I think is two layers deep. And again, each one of these are their own unique deployed smart contracts by our users. Um, you can see here's uh, the Unitize smart contract. We can actually click this and see uh, that they have their own token. This is the user's address that created this token and we can see some information. So if I actually go into 3box.io and forward slash the address, uh, there we go. So we're pulling information. This user is this user because they verified their Twitter account uh, and so on. So um, going back into the actual market. So if we come back here and we can hop in here, you can see all the different uh, items that you can actually grab uh, 
the unit ties uh, voting app that's all nice and sold out so sorry um, but what's really fascinating is look at this thing here's the actual contract hash so if we click that we can go into this thing called e ether scan now this is another idea behind interoperability so being able to uh, see all of the information within the blockchain um, all right here we can see 276 unique addresses are actually holding uh, these tokens and we can see each one of the uh, the addresses that are holding that token and what's also neat is here's all of these beautiful functions that you can get on this smart contract supply is 601 uh, if we want to see a token by index let's say three we can get um, token oh the token ID by index is 31 so that's that's quite interesting if you want you can actually uh, update uh, items within the smart contract directly here and coming back to uh, the interoperability aspect if you run your own virtual reality uh, website then you can also connect to this uh, smart contract and do the transfer and all these other functions as long as you are the actual owner of that so big 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 difference to how we're, we're building on uh, today so going back to this So also Truffle, great, great system to be able to publish, publish the items. But again, we're just going to talk about the graph and Arweave. So first things first, uh, when we minted that token, you saw a few things happening. One, every time we uploaded a file, uh, it went to Arweave. And two, notifying us, the application, when that mint has been minted. So just looking at the graph, uh, let's start down here. Uh, at the bottom left um, on the mint base site. Basically, you're the user, you're interacting, you're minting, you connect whatever wallet you want. Um, again, we interact with all sorts of wallets, lots of wallets. Uh, once you interact with that wallet and you say, I wanna mint 10 of these, we notify uh, your wallet, either MetaMask, Trust, or whatever that is, that you need to do that. You confirm it, that thing goes on to the blockchain. Once that gets confirmed, then it goes the graph is constantly listening for uh, this update to happen. It then pushes that data uh, up to IPFS. And then once that's been updated, then um, our site is constantly listening for the graph to update. So um, once it says, uh, Nate, you've just minted 15 of these things, then we're gonna update that thing. We cannot as a company change the graph. Uh, only your interactions with Ethereum can change the graph. Um, so this opens up a whole new door with interoperability, allowing uh, OpenSea, CryptoVoxels, and Decentraland, and all these other groups to have a choice. They can either directly ping Ethereum, again, uh, that smart contract directly to move, to check how many, or whatever. But if they want to hit something really quick, like say, who's the owner of this NFT? Are they the owner of the ticket of this NFT? Then CryptoVoxels can ping our graph directly and just check to see if they're the owner of that. Um, if they are, they can do a quick signature and then they're done. Um, so really, really fascinating uh, a change. Instead of us listening directly to Ethereum, uh, it's just, it turns into a nightmare. You end up just doing millions of loops that is very inefficient. So the graph kind of aggregates all of that stuff together. Uh, so here we're gonna start talking about ROE for a second. So basically you come in, uh, as the minter, so you create your market, your store. You can create as many stores as you want on, on Mintbase. Let's say you're an ad agency and you wanna uh, mint uh, one for Nike, uh, a Nike campaign, and you don't want any of, uh, any of the information crossing between, let's say, Samsung. So you can create a whole different market or smart contract for uh, Samsung. So Let's say we are in, uh, so this is all on Ethereum. So then you mint all your NFTs, it's all in Ethereum. And then once that uh, mint is created, um, all of the files, because Ethereum is just definitely not the place to be storing files. Um, it just costs too much money and it'll fill up the blocks way too fast uh, because everybody in the world is basically copying uh, all of the state and that just gets bloated and that's a whole other topic that we'll go into. On our weave, the Arweave block weave, which is designed for storage, uh, we're basically holding all of that information. So let's say we minted 
uh, four different batches of tokens. Each one token can actually have uh, several different file types on that token. So we can mint uh, MP3s, MP4s, music, um, legal documents that says you are the licensed owner of X, Y, and Z. Uh, and here's the piece of art that comes with it. Um, what's really neat is uh, we got to um, actually have uh, Camilla Russo mint uh, one item onto our system where she just launched her book, The Infinite Machine. And if we come into it, she actually, so here's her market. Boom, boom, boom. So once that loads, The Infinite Machine, she actually gave a, uh, you have the main image, this is one NFT, you have the main image, you have the uh, text that comes with it, and then you have uh, the title of it, and we actually have a sound file. So all of this is all within uh, that one NFT. And so the authorization of that token can do a lot more on top of that. So uh, if we actually want to check, here is the unique ID for this metadata. We can actually go into rweave.net forward slash. We put in that, uh, that ETH or that, um, that ID, uh, I'm surprised that actually. So then we get this metadata and the metadata is set in stone. I can't change this, you can't change it. No one in the world can change this information. It's set in stone. We also have uh, the image. If we go over here um, on the rweave.net forward slash that ID and we have the animation URL, which is the actual sound that goes with it. So we have immutability, we have a timestamp of when it was created, we have it and it's verified by several different gateways. Um, that's, that's quite massive. Um, big difference from storing something on uh, an S3 bucket where any of my employees can go in and change it whenever they want. Uh, it would never stand up in court. Um, so here we go. Uh, let's go into uh, so now we're living in this whole new world where here's this NFT, here's MintBase. Uh, we have Ethereum, we have Arweave, and we have the graph all kind of working together. If MintBase ever decides to uh, disappear or if we, who knows what, uh, then basically that's fine. Uh, your files will keep living on as long as Arweave and Ethereum still continue. And all these other different decentralized applications can also ping the graph uh, for that latest information. So this is kind of the next, the next iteration. Um, next JS, just to go in the traditional realm, uh, it was a big change for us. Really, really happy we did that. Uh, it's switching to from a single, single page to a, a server side render. Uh, the biggest reason why we did that is because we have a very visual website. So the only way to get dynamic social cards was to switch to this. Um, and now we're gonna be constantly optimizing to push and make a uh, mint base much faster uh, over time. Uh, that's, uh, that's basically the, the big grand scheme of it. Um, we can actually come in, let's see. So if you want, you can just kind of come over to MintBase. We can, and you can just kind of skim through what people are creating. Um, DJs are starting to come on board. Uh, photographers and all sorts of other groups. Yeah, I think that's, that's it. Thanks a lot for uh, tuning in and uh, give us a try. Again, you can try us on rinkaby.mintbase.io to test it on that, or you just go to mintbase.io and that'll be on mainnet. Uh, and definitely, uh, if you wanna follow along, you can go into our MintBase uh, Twitter. That's easy to find us. Uh, we're on Telegram too, if you run into problems. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any issues. Thanks, bye.